click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in the previous topic we have discussed about the abnormal electronic configuration of chromium and copper and, and now in this topic we are going to talk about the general characteristic of D block elements. So what are those? Let me talk about that in this topic. So friends, in this topic, I'm going to talk about the important general characteristic of the D-block elements. So starting with the first one, that is most of the transition elements have metallic properties and most of the transition elements are basically metals. So that is the reason that they have metallic property like ductility, that is malleability and so on. So this is the first one that is I'm going to talk about. So this is the first point that is what I have discussed about. And now let me discuss about the next one that is except Hg, other transition elements have typical metallic structure. So metals are nothing but they are basically we understand that is they are solid in nature and that's the reason most of the and all the metals are basically solid at room temperature except mercury which is liquid at room temperature. So therefore except this all the transition elements have typical metallic structure. So talking about the next point we have that is their compounds generally contain unpaired electrons and that's the reason that those compounds are basically paramagnetic in nature and based on that because if we have more the unpaired electrons the compound will be more paramagnetic in nature so talking about the next one that is they show variable oxidation state so this is what we have discussed in our previous lecture also during the electronic configuration we understand that is the electronic configuration of the transition elements it can range from that is if i'm talking about the d orbitals so it can range from that is 1 to 10 so that's the reason they could acquire unpaired electrons and that's the reason that it could acquire a different oxidation state, multiple oxidation state also. For example, if you talk about that is scandium. So scandium has an oxidation state of plus 2 and as well as plus 3. So not only plus 2 and plus 3 but there are also the other elements which will have variable oxidation state depending upon the unpaired electrons and depending upon the electronic configuration. So talking about the next one that is we have, that is they have the tendency to form complex so complex are those compounds which consist of a central metal as well as the ligand so in this case the central metal is basically the d block element so we can't take s block element as a central metal because obviously the properties of the s block element and the d block elements are different in fact we also decide that is the both are metals but it comes to the property which can form a complex and in that case basically the d block elements are the one which can form complex so talking about the next point we have that is they are heavy metals and have high density melting point even that is very high boiling point is also very high as well as the higher heat of vaporization so because of this quality they are very hard metals and in fact and in fact this is the reason that the s block elements they can be cut with a knife but we can't cut so that makes us to understand that is why the d block elements are very heavy metals or they are very hard metals so now let us discuss about the next points so the next point is transition elements are less reactive than s block elements the reason behind is the ionization enthalpy we understand that is the ionization enthalpy of the s block element is very much less that's the reason that the electrons can be lost by the s block elements very easily but here if you talk about the last electron so to lose the last electron is very much difficult if we compare it with the s block elements and that's the reason that the d block elements or the transition elements are not that much reactive compared to that of the s block elements so talking about the next point that is we have they form alloys with the different metals so this has the tendency that is the d block elements or the transition metals have the tendency to form alloys with the different other metals so talking about the next one that is they can form organometallic compounds for example grignard reagent that is rmgx so in that case in that case mg that is the magnesium is the one that can form an organometallic compound but not only the rmgx in this case the mg is nothing but an s block element but suppose if you talk about the d block elements there are also other compounds which consist of the d block elements and they have the tendency to form organometallic compounds so talking about the next one that is we have that is most of the transition metals are used as catalyst so whether it could be rare nickel whether it could be cobalt it could be iron so this all that is elements along with that of their compounds they are used as catalyst so in this case this was the important general characteristic of as well as the transition elements that is what i have discussed about in this topic and that's it so thank you friends for watching this video i hope you have understood this video very clearly and i hope i'll see you next time till then don't forget to subscribe channel. thank you so much